feet. So um, let's talk for a moment about the technical issues. Uh, can you elaborate on your working process uh, and talk about some of the technical problems that you have uh, creating, creating a piece uh, using silk screen, using printing with plexiglass, doing yeah. um, reverse glass work? Well, it, it, it is complicated, but I'm getting to a point where I knew I know what I'm doing. I'm, mm -hmm. All all everything is set up. I used to it. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. At the start, start it's complicated. It's complicated to print on a smooth surface. You know, like a plexiglass. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Right. Yeah, especially for the registration of the image because my painting are in two parts. So I have to be well, uh, well and straight the image, well and straight printed. You know, so. It's, but it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Today my main problem is to find money to, to work, you know, because I need to buy some paint and uh, you know, mm -hmm. some paper. I just bought um, Eddie, my gallery from Zurich, bought me a plexiglass painting, so mm. I could buy some materials for, for working again. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're working with inks or with paints or both? Uh, acrylic. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's regular paint, acrylic paint. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So your work involves like uh, what you term the an accumulated layering yes. uh, of the print, printing. Uh, and how do you de how do you develop that briefly? I don't not to get into your trade secrets. I mean. No, no. We just at one point I started seal screen in Montreal because uh, mm -hmm. I was living next to a, a shop with a t-shirt shop where they, where they were printing t-shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. And at one point, I, I was recuperating the image into the New York Times Sunday paper, and I cut the image. And after that, I did uh, photocopies of them, you know, like in color. And all. But silk screen, I could print out the, the color I want. And uh, I asked the guy to to um, to get me four four frames, and I started to print, started to print one image at a time. When you go in nature, everything is in, uh, interconnected. You, know. mm. you don't have like a tree, you don't have like a bird, you don't have like the river. It's, it's all connected it's all at the same the time. Yeah. 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 So I want to get rid of the time. I want to break the time, linear time, to right. get into some kind of, quote, eternity. You know. mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm using also, I, I said already, Images from different. It, it could come from the Mayan. It could come from the Hindu. It could come from Japanese. And if mm -hmm. I put them together, I'm getting like a mm -hmm. world expand, expanded world. You know, uh, more interesting for me. Well, in that sense, uh, what you're indicating is that the principle of time. Yes. Is really a human intervention on nature, in a sense, or an attempt. To correspond to it, but and uh, with not from the organic side of the, the mind, but more from the rationalistic point of the mind, 
right and left brain, etc. Yeah. Which is really, in many ways, an imposition of human reality mm. upon natural, the natural world. Yeah, because right, yeah. right brain. I mean, I think we went with you to see the Leonard Schnell at the Open Center, the Alpha Butte versus the Goddess. Mm. Mm. I think we went together. I don't know yeah. because yes, uh, yeah. he's talking about that left brain, right brain. Yeah, right. and we're only thinking about uh, with the left brain, and the right brain is not so much in use. That's why I like images so much. Mm -hmm. But I like text also. You know, I'm, I'm reading a lot of books, and, uh, and yeah. I'm, I'm I'm good in both, and I'm, I'm happy in both. Yeah. But there's more energy uh, into image because it's there. You know, it's just like you cannot escape it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in front of yeah. you. And I seen a, an interview on TV, and they were a porn actress, and she wrote a book about her experience in, as a porn actress. And she, in fact, she says she liked it, and so. But she was next to a writer, and the writer said, "No, the writing is much better. Look at read sad, and it's much, <laughs> it's much uh, stronger." But I don't believe so. I mean. I think we're more connected with the body, with images, you know. That's why all religions have yeah. also so many images in the church and all that, because uh, they need to impress uh, the poor people. Well, I, I should reference that here in, in your studio you have quite an extensive library of literature, especially. And I see that literature is really kind of an organic expression also. I mean rather than non-fiction being more rationalistically expressed, more developed. So, but your, your library is, has a lot of s stories which are, are really organic from what I see, uh, what I recognize in, in, your, in your library. So that means a lot yeah. in terms of one thing that, that is meaningful to me uh, as a writer is the difference between definition and description. Uh -huh. So what I try to do, because I write about dream, I write li not about dreams, I write dreams literally, and I try to describe them rather than define what they are. Mm -hmm. So this is something I relate to, why I relate to artists so strongly yeah. Yeah. and poets and not so much with, with people writing nonfiction uh, on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So and this is why I, I feel connected with the art world so strongly and yeah, what you're true. doing yeah, 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 yeah. and the layering in your work especially is very appealing because it's like the layering of, of conceptual realities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dreams, yeah, it's layering of dreams. Or dreams and, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when you turn, when you're thinking in terms of uh, 
eros. So, but by the same token, I want to say, how does the scale of your prints that you're working in this 1.05 yeah, meters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how does that relate to your intentional purposes, uh, specifically why you, why, why you developed that? Yeah, it's happened that in Montreal, I had some, uh, I cut out some, some plexiglass sheet. I was doing like a column, uh, maybe 50 by 50 centimeter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had some leftover, rectangle re leftover, mm -hmm. one uh, ratio, one, two. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started to print on those plexiglass. Mm -hmm. on those leftovers, because I didn't okay. choose it for my painting. At first I, I painted on top of the plexiglass and then I painted as silk screen reversed. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah. happened, at, at, I came to New York and I was still using this 35 by 17.5 centimeters small uh, uh, rectangle that I use to frame my work, you know, mm -hmm. around my mm -hmm. painting, I, 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 there is a surrounding, it's still there. And at one point, uh, a friend of mine, Germain Reuss, came to New York, he's a painter, a famous painter, and he said, oh, Jean-Pierre, could you imagine the impact that could, that could have a larger scale uh, painting than this small one? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I get, I get to think to myself, and I get into this shape, a format of 105. And at one point, I say, well, what the fuck is, why is that 105, why not 107? And it happens that um, my eye is 1.72, and the norm, golden number of my body is 105. <laughs> you know, so I, right. last time we were talking about bees, or you know, like it's like an organic connection that I found to practice. You know, to choose the work, I found this connection. Yeah. So my body is really is perfect for my body. So I, I didn't calculate. I, I I didn't use Le Corbusier number, but. In fact, I found it. It's yeah. recurrent, then. Yeah, yeah. I, I use it only this, yeah. this, this format, that's it. Uh -huh. So I don't it comes out of the, the organic nature. It, yeah, totally. Wow. Yeah. That's how yeah. my work is organically built, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah. Connected and, and thought, but uh, afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to do that. You know, so. Also, uh, the question, I, I would say that the color resonances in your work Mm -hmm. and how, how those occur to you, I guess I would ask. I'm not asking you to... Well, it depends on how you want to describe it. It's up to you. I, I didn't get it. Color, color resonance, color resonances. Like, yeah, you know, understand. there are uh, the reds and blues, but the reds and blues in your work, don't, con don't they, they work together, they're harmonious. Yeah, I'm working with harmonies. So good, yeah, yeah. harmonies, yeah. yeah. But you know, I have two or three master color master. Harmonic. Of course, uh, is Matisse uh, and okay. Roscoe. I really love the harmonies of Roscoe and Soutine. Uh -huh. You know, and okay. but Soutine, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Love, and especially for the energy yeah. of life, is yes. there. Okay. Life is there. It's like a sperm. Uh, it's like sperm. It's, it's, ejacul ejacul it's painting a uh, ejaculating. You know, it's, it's like jouissance. You know, and the color must be like that. But first of all, the reference to art. Then there's a reference to Mexico, to Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go into the tomb mm -hmm. in Egypt, the, 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 the um, sailing are blue. Mm. And you, are, you enter in another dimension, true mm. colors. I'm sorry, entering into what dimension? A, a dimension of infinite dimension with yeah. the blue. Okay. Or you can find that in uh, Yves Klein, so you know Yves Klein work yes, on the Yves blue. Klein. Yeah, so yeah, uh, right. it's changing the, the wave of your brain, and that's what I'm mm. using in my work. And also, I'm using it with my uh, experience through nature. Yeah. If I see some stone, or if I, I look, we have this stone. I found it in, doing canoeing with so my girlfriend, uh, Olga, in Pennsylvania, you know. And uh, I use stone, or. We yeah. Talk about the stone. Mm. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> That's quite a remarkable stone. Yeah, there's a river, uh, so it's in Pennsylvania, next, mm -hmm. next to Strasbourg, mm -hmm. 
yeah. Pennsylvania. And uh, my, my girlfriend, Olga, had a family there. So we went to visit mm -hmm. them a few times. And while doing canoe with our new view, we stop on the border of the river and we find plenty of stone like this with mm. incredible shapes. Mm. So I, I took, a, I took like, I don't know, maybe 20 kilograms of stone, yeah. but I couldn't bring them back to, from New York to here. So mm. I showed mm -hmm. a few and I use it in a painting behind us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this shape is like an arrow, it's, it's so strange. It's just, a, yeah. you have a mystery into this, this shape, into the, also in the weight and, you know. Our stones, have some the many stones have that same shape? Apparently. I don't think so. That's, a, no. that's the only one. I see that in your in your paintings. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, I see a rec uh, an occurrence of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a shape who doesn't exist, except if you find it. Mm -hmm. You need to go mm -hmm. to make the walk, to make the trip, to find this stone. Accidental. Yeah. No, not accidental, coincidental. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to go Findings, out there yeah. and finding it. You know. yeah. yeah, findings are a very interesting yeah. principle as well. Yeah, yeah. Like things you accidentally uh, occur. But well, maybe we can stop stop there and. I have more questions. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you want one one question more? Wait four minutes. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Stop. Is it? Yeah. I stop. Mm -hmm. Restart.